Welcome to another segment of In Another Opinion, a public information program where our discussions are focused on the communities of color in the state of Rhode Island. I'm your host, Peter Wells. My guests today are Monique Watson and Jaina Garcia, both of Providence, and have a special connection that we're going to talk about today. Our theme today is organ donation and the minority community. Welcome, ladies. Welcome. Welcome. Thanks for having us. Oh, well, thanks Thank for you. coming on and sharing the story. Monique, this is, this is unbelievable that you're, you're, you're brave enough to talk about the, the situation that you went through. So, so tell me and tell our, our listeners. All right, well, I actually received a kidney transplant on November 13, 2017, so just a little over two months ago. Um, Jaina Garcia is a long-term, long-time friend of mine um, for about a good eight years, mm -hmm. and she was my donor. Um, so it's a huge deal for the both of us, and I'm very proud and um, to be able to talk about this and be so public about it. It is. Uh, it's important. Very important. And as we discussed earlier, that um, the minority community is is a little bit lax on on donating organs and even donating blood. Yes. That matter. Yeah, it's true. And uh, clearly, it's needed. I yes. mean, you're a recipient of, of Jaina's. I'm a kidney patient myself right. and, and could use a kidney. And maybe one day I'll get my match and, and be will like come. you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's definitely coming. So tell me, was it difficult for you to make the decision to donate your organ? No. For some reason, I, I wasn't, it didn't like, it just was like, all right, I'll donate, I'll go get tested. I think it was more harder on her to just like for me to be like all right I'll go I'll go get tested because she was just like no like it's all right oh wait a second I gotta talk to my doctor but then I, was, I waited I tried to give her time but it never like dawned on me or I felt some way I just was like all right I'll go do it like it was just easy I can't really explain it were you afraid no I wasn't I wasn't afraid at all even the day of surgery I think we fool around so much mm -hmm. that it didn't really hit me until like I'm sitting in the bed and I'm like, oh my God, I'm about to do this. Like, I can't take it back. I can't go nowhere. So I was just like, all right, like it's gonna happen. And it, and it happened so fast. Like I was talking and all of a sudden I was sleeping <laughs> and then I wake up and I'm like, oh my God, I did it. It's gone. Yeah, it was yeah. gone. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Monique? It was very hard for me to ask. Um, it's one of those things where um, I'm such a giver, not a receiver. So I can't say, well, Jaina, you know, can you donate your kidney and then I'll give you my heart, or I'll, I'll let you borrow my arm. You know, it's one of those things that, how do I repay someone back? And that's always my biggest worry. And, um, but she made it very, very easy. Um, one of my biggest fear was it was gonna change our friendship. So I had a heart to heart with her and I told her, if this is going to change our friendship for the worse, or separate us or whatever, I don't wanna do this because I love you and I love the friendship and how it has become and where it's going and I don't want anything to jeopardize that. And she said, no, no. I said, are you sure, are you sure? Even to the very day of, I was like, listen, if you change your mind, don't worry about it. And we can roll out the carts. We don't have to be here. We don't, you know, and she was like, nope, I'm ready, I'm going. So it was um, hard, but as the time went on, I kind of adjusted to her. Well, it's amazing that you're friends and that you actually, and that you were compatible. Well, I was, I'm going to school to be a nurse. So I already know my blood type. So I'm O negative. So I know that my blood's universal. I can donate to anyone. I already knew that. Mm -hmm. So I kind of said something to her and she was just kind of like, all right. But she still wouldn't budge. <laughs> she was just like, okay, like, all right, TT, <laughs> like, I get it. And I was like, all right. And I'm just waiting for her. Yeah. And she was just like, I held out for quite some time. I was like, I will wait five years on the list. Don't worry about it. Oh like, you know, and she was just like, nope. And I avoided her for a good, like, three months. Like, she would call me, what's the lady's number? And I'm like, oh, I don't have it. Oh, let me look for it. Uh -huh. And then one day she was like, are you home? I was like, yeah. I she rang the doorbell, like, two seconds. I think she was, like, waiting in the bushes. No. But you weren't waiting in the bushes? Nope. I was at home. Right I was there. like, oh, all right. I was like, you're home already? Because with her, she's like, I call her Miss Obama because uh -huh. she's always on the run, like <laughs> always true. doing something. And I'm like, no, there's no well, way. That's a positive thing. No, it is. She's always doing something, yeah. always like helping someone or busy, like, you know, her kids are, like do extra activities. So she's always doing something with the kids or anything that has to do with family. Okay. So yes. one day I call her, I'm like, so are you home yet? And she's like, oh, yeah, I just got home. I was like, all right, great. And then I was like, I'm coming over. <laughs> I don't think she thought I was serious. And when I got there, 
She's like, where was you? I was like, I was around. <laughs> yeah, and so, I took the binder. I took a picture of the binder because she was hiding it. I was. So and that's when you that's when you found out that she had. Yeah, so it takes a lot of steps. Like you have to call, you make appointments. Um, Tell it, me about it. Well, you go, you have to call and make an appointment. Mm -hmm. They evaluate you. It's like a, like they legit interrogate you. Sure. Like they're going to the FBI or something. They're so serious about it. Well, they want to make sure that you're going to yeah, take healthy. care of yourself. Yeah, they want to yes. make sure you're healthy. They want to make sure that you're even compatible. A lot of health stuff goes into it because they, you, they, they can't give someone a kidney that's not even going to be good for that person because they want to make sure that when this person gets a kidney, they're going to be healthy and it's going to work mm -hmm. for them and that you're a healthy person yourself since exactly. you're willing to donate it. So I exercise a lot. I eat pretty healthy. So, I mean, it was, it's easy. It was easy for me. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I found out some stuff about my health that I didn't know, which was great, but nothing like bad or anything like that. So I still was able to donate. Well, listen, the day of the surgery, tell me, was it, was, was the surgery, well, because you were out, so that you didn't feel anything, but how was the recovery? The first couple, well, for me. For you, for yes, me. as a um, recipient. <laughs> Well, when I woke up, I, of course, I was in pain. I was, you know, and that was expected. Um, so the first day, I could say I slept pretty much that, that whole day. The next day, because they had me on so many medicines, no. I think it just, <laughs> mm -hmm. I was kind of more like upbeat. I couldn't really walk and I was sore, but again, I had the medicine and um, she had more pain than I. I felt like I recovered faster and I thought it would be the other way around, but it wasn't. She was in a lot more pain um, it took her a while. She like cried a lot, um, and even then, I was like apologizing for that moment. I was like, maybe I shouldn't have. Like maybe you know. And then she was like, no. Even in her tears, she was like, I would do it again right now if they asked me. So it's a little late now, right? I know, but right? yeah. she you was know, like, I don't want gone. it. She was crying so, at one point. And she's well, like, what about you though, Gina? How you know was it, it painful? Yeah, it was more painful because when you get the incision done, they fill you up with um, air. So they have to like blow it, blow your stomach up in order for them to see where they're going. Mm -hmm. So think about it, they're moving like my organs and stuff to get to my kidney. Yes. So all the air stays in there and I couldn't like, go to the bathroom. I couldn't go to the bathroom, so it was, was uncomfortable. uncomfortable. It was Very. just painful because you hear, you but can hear and feel the gas, but it ain't going nowhere. Was that pretty much the pain? Yeah, because yeah. I was sore from the incision, but it wasn't as bad. So if someone were, if you were trying to convince someone else to be a donor and they say, well, to you, they'd say, well, was it painful? You know, how do you, how I do would you respond say to it's that? not painful. It will be uncomfortable for you because everyone's different right. and our pain levels are different. Like sure. what's uncomfortable for me and unbearable for me may not be that way for someone else. Someone else might have it done and be like, oh, it was so easy. It wasn't a bother for me. But mm -hmm. again, I've never had surgery. I've never been in the hospital. The only time I was in the hospital was when I had my son. So this was like, this was like a major surgery for me because I've never- That was a me. painful experience, wasn't it? Yeah, but I would, listen, it's not the same, <laughs> trust me. It's not the it's same. Not, nope. Okay. Mm -mm. So now, were you in the same rooms? No. no, we wanted they to be. They never us. I was going to call, like, I, I asked everyone, can she come down? But because I was the recipient, I was in ICU for the first couple of days, and they had her upstairs. Mm -hmm. And after the second day, I was going to withdraw. I was calling each other on the phone every five minutes. Like, it was ridiculous. I had the nurse wheel her down, and she sat in a room with me for a few hours out the day. So we okay. didn't kind of, like, you know, be with each other. And then eventually they moved me upstairs, and we were just walking to each other's room. Um, the last few days that we were there, but no, the first couple of days we weren't. Yeah, we wasn't. So are you happy you did it? <clears throat> oh yeah, I'm really happy. So I would do it all over you're again. happy. Oh, I am extremely happy. Yes. I feel alive, I have so much energy. There's a lot of things that I couldn't do that I'm doing more. I went from like sleeping all day to like cannot even sleep at all. And everyone's like, what is wrong? Like, no one really understands. You know, you have to be in the situation and have mm -hmm. it done to really feel what I feel. And, you know, it's a blessing, and I can't thank her enough to do this for me and be able to see my children grow. I have a five-year-old and a 15-year-old, and, you know, they're more, you know, I think my son was a little bit nervous, but now he sees, like, I'm fine just so, just to see it in his face, the stress relief of him as a teenager, it, it's just, it's a feeling I really can't explain. It's just. Well, I have to admit, yeah. um, you, you're the first kidney recipient that I know that has recovered as quickly as you have. You know. 
Listen, I think I it's just in my genes. Her. <laughs> it's in my genes, um, especially my father's side. He had three um, brain surgeries, and yeah, he really? had like a yeah, he had like a blood clot in his head, and he had three. And then within a few days, he's up doing his thing. My grandmother, God bless her, she be ninety. She's walking and talking, and like, I honestly believe it's just. And also, um, you know, being a child of God, um, just having faith in Him, and just knowing that I was gonna be okay. It just I always went into it positive. I never questioned Him. I never doubted. I never second guessed. I nothing. Whatever was going to be, what was going to be. And look, being patient and learning to be patient. You know, that was one of my biggest things going into it four years ago. I, I had to learn patience. And with that being said, mm -hmm. I feel like this is kind of my reward for trusting him. And um, so I did heal quick. I did. A little bit faster than all. And I couldn't get over it. But I even tried sitting down thinking maybe I'm going too fast. But my body just was like, no, it's your time. You sat down for four years. Like, it's your time. And so how long were you on dialysis? Um, I was on dialysis twice, um, a total, about a year and a half. Okay, well that's a short period of time. Yeah, well the first year um, was a little bit over a year, then my kidney picked up, I was running at a, a small percentage, a good, I want to say about 20%. Um, I ran for a good two years, and then February of last year I ended up back on dialysis, and then in November I had um, my kidney transplant, so. Wow, that's quick. Now my, like most people wait three, four years before they get a kidney. Mm -hmm. I've been on dialysis myself now for three and a half years. Yeah, so that's a very, very long yeah. It is a long time. Long time. And you know, going three days a week and for four hours I was in the chair and I would work in the morning time and go there. Then after I have to attend to my children, and what they're doing, so I'm working like three full-time jobs in one day. And you know, a lot of people think that if, if you're on dialysis that, that uh, it makes you tired and but I, I did not find that. How about you? I did. I was exhausted. Were you? Uh, yeah. I, I, especially treatment? the first time around. I was really, it was new to me. My body, again, i always been on the go. I'm mm -hmm. a goer. Like, I just constantly go, go. So to have it sit down and adjust to that, my body just was just like, um, The second time around, in the beginning, it was tough. I slept a lot. I think mainly because of the creacne, um, which is the kidney, the higher the number, the lower right. your kidney function is. Um, it was so high, I just didn't have the energy. Um, but once I got adapted, I had a little bit more energy. But yeah, I slept. I was tired. I have to admit, I, I it doesn't it doesn't cause that. I don't have that reaction. No. That's good. I also didn't get sick, so mm -hmm. I mean, I started dialysis sooner than than probably yeah. a lot of people. Might. Right. So, but but the three days a week at at, four, at three and a half to four hours a day. Yes. It's uh, it can it can be grueling sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But 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 I but I don't sleep and I, I find it difficult to sleep there because it's so bright. Right. And there's so much going on. Yep. I never it's slept very hard there. Hard to sleep. I would try to doze off. I even put a hat with my head. You know, I won't come with their sunglasses, a hat, and blankets. And I try to all it. And then, nope, I like to talk. So I talk to all the nurses there, and yeah. I make friends next to me. And you know, I watch TV. So. So I heard, by the way. What did you hear? <laughs> <laughs> I heard that you, you made friends, but I do the same thing. I talk to uh, fellow patients. Right. In fact, I'm an advocate uh, for this, for Fresenius uh, in the region. Really? Yes. Fresenius is number one. So I go to different meetings and talk with other patients That's from different awesome. parts of uh, New England. Uh, and, and we discuss some of the issues. And, yeah. and from those issues, we actually get back to uh, uh, the, the regional uh, uh, coordination of kidney of kidney and donors, and they actually make changes based on our meetings and some of the things that we talk about. That's amazing. But Jana, now I want to get back to you for a minute. Now, you you you're, you were born in the Dominican Republic. When did you come to to Providence? I came here when I was like one or two. Oh, you were a baby. Yeah, I was a baby. So you pretty much grown here my whole life. Yeah. yeah. And how did you two meet? <laughs> <laughs> so she is my nephew's mother. So she has okay. clearly a child with my brother. So you're so we so met through family. Through family. Yeah. Kind of. But um and we just formed our own Yeah, our own like friendship. friendship and it just it was very, very natural and yeah, just pure over time. And genuine and <laughs> Yeah. And it still is Well it's clear that it's clear. I mean at the time that I've spent with the two of you, it's uh, I find that you're so full of life Thank for you. for a better f phrase to use, I guess. Yes. I don't know. Um, I said you guys were crazy, but, you know, <laughs> but, but you, you're not the first. <laughs> but you're just full of life, and it's and it's it's amazing to see uh, how both of you have recovered in in two months' time. 
Yeah. Because yeah. it's only been two months yeah. since you've had the transplant. Yeah, we pushed each other. Yeah, listen. I was more pushing her, and this she one, was she... she was good. I don't know what medicine they gave her, but I <laughs> needed some of it because yeah. I was in, I was crying in this wheelchair, and she's like, "Dad, did you do?" And I, I had Why to kick you, myself out crying? of. I was in pain, oh, and then but she's funny. uncomfortable. So then, my incision it was, was hurting. Tears. It was happy tears. I was in, imagine you being in pain. You're holding on to your incision because you think it's going to open because you can't stop laughing because <laughs> she's hilarious. Uh -huh. So I'd be like, can you just bring me back to my room, please? <laughs> but she would come back for more. Uh -huh. I would tell her no, and I can't help it. <laughs> and she would come rolling looking for more. She well, liked to be tortured. It's, it's clear that you two are very, very close. Yeah, we talk every day. Now, do you feel that you're any closer because of the transplant? Well, um, us being out of work, I think we get yeah. to have more time with each other, you know. Well, as besides that, I mean, because of the actual transplant mm -hmm. itself, do you feel there's a different connection, metabolically? Well, she tries to say that she eats sweets more because <laughs> of me, but I don't, she I don't believe more? her. Yep, she says that she likes. <laughs> no, not sweets. No, I sweets. Eat, she sweets. likes to eat sweets I, I a eat lot. More. Oh, yeah, okay. no, no. Yeah, I like, like I said earlier, um, I think a lot of my, um, I already been energized, but she gives me more energy. Like I feel sensitive transplant. I have more of her because she's always hyper. She's more hyper than me. I can know how to, like, you know, sometimes settle. You know. She just always. <laughs> so now I feel like we're both like. Yeah. together so I get a lot of that from her there's some of the things um, personal things I have experienced and I'm just like nope this is because of you because but it's overall um, nothing nothing answer. bad yeah I so let me ask you uh, enough people I'm sure in the community that, that your contemporaries know that you have had the transplant I suppose yes and what do they say what, what what are they saying about it do you hear any anybody saying well maybe I should become a donor Everyone always says to me, oh my God, you did that? You have a son. I, I don't think I could do it. That's everyone's response. I don't think I can do it. I was like, yes, you can. I was like, you have two. I was like, you really don't need two. You can have one. Mm -hmm. So I went to this event and one of the girls there actually, I have to meet with her this week because she wants to be a donor because of the story I told them when I went to this like little um, positive event mm -hmm. I went to. And now she wants to be a, a kidney donor. So I think it depends on how you express the message to someone and tell them about it mm -hmm. because you really don't need two kidneys. You can survive and live a normal life with one. On, right. on my end, our conversation is different. Um, first of all, I was born with one kidney, so I, was, I had a kidney, one kidney my whole entire life. But a lot of people, uh, friends, long-term fr uh, friends I haven't seen from high school have reached out to me, especially on Facebook and Inbox, and they're actually going through the same thing, already had a transplant before that you would never think, because no one puts it out there. And I got a few of them, and I'm like, really? Another woman I knew my whole life, I call her like one of my aunts, I never knew she lives in a different state. She's on dialysis, and um, a friend that I worked with like years ago, we keep in touch, her husband's in the same situation, so she asked me, you know, um, would you like, would you come down and talk to my husband? I said, absolutely. Like, so to me, it was a shocker to see other people going through it and never mention it until I was put myself out there and then they just constantly come in. So um, when I see a message, I instantly reply when I can and, you mm -hmm. know, so I'm there. Like I said, anything you want to know, let me ask me, like, how I, however I can help, I'll help, like, whatever. So it's, you know. Well, being you're, 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 the two of you now are, are somewhat ambassadors, if you will. <laughs> Um, for, for, for kidney transplantation, and, and, and it's a good thing. It, it really is, especially because as young as you are, you, you, you are actually role models for other people in your age bracket who, need, who could step up and, and, and help someone else Absolutely. with the gift of Absolutely. life. Absolutely. I know, one of my friends, my friend Lami, he's like, you are such a hero. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, no I'm not. He's like, yes you are. <laughs> He like posted it on his Facebook. My friend is a hero. I was like, yeah. I stop doing Everyone that. calls her an angel, well, you, and she you is. You are. You are. You know, you are. at first I felt uncomfortable because, like, you know, when you give something to someone and you don't want anyone to like say anything to you. So like now it's like out there, and everyone's like, oh my god, you're such a hero, you're such an angel. And I'm like, I'm just me. Yeah. We but now I'm kind of like, all right, thank you. <laughs> like I try to be as comfortable as possible with it. Well, you should be, and you should, and you and you should feel good about what you did, and I know you do. Uh, and, and you shouldn't hide it. You should, you know, because here's the problem. Uh, there are a, n a number of people in the community who could use okay. a transplant, yeah, be it a can. kidney or a liver or right. what, whatever organ is, is, is damaged. And people don't realize that if they step up and, and help this person, 
you're giving that person the gift of life. Yeah, Absolutely. True. Absolutely. And, 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 and if, if it doesn't interfere with your health as a donor, yeah. then why not? You right, know? Yeah. And, and that, be, that becomes the issue, why not? In our community, the minority community, we don't do enough We of do this. not. And you get screened, so it's not like they pay for it. It's not like you're coming out of pocket. They go based on your schedule. So they try to make it as, as easy and as convenient as possible. As like possible. I work in a hospital, so for me, my schedule fluctuates a lot. Mm -hmm. So even if I had to take like, like any of my time or like fix my schedule to go there, because it's right next door, I could walk there. I would always do it. They always did it around my time to help me out, which well, was that's great. That's important. Yeah, I've, I've spoken with the, uh, the controlling nurse that usually controls the, uh, the, the sets up the schedule and, and so on and so forth for transplants. And that th their concern of the donor Mm -hmm. is to make sure that the donor is number one healthy, yeah. that the donor will take care of themselves after procedure. Yeah. Well, they give you a binder. Which is very important. Mm -hmm. They give you what? They give you a binder. Like they let you know like, this is what you shouldn't do. You, I, like, I like to eat salty food and she's like, no, you can't eat a whole bunch of salty <laughs> foods like that. So tell me about your diet now. Like right now, mm -hmm. I try, I eat pretty healthy. Like right now, I kind of been like a little lenient with myself because I'm not working out. I'm not in the gym again. But once I go back, I'll be like high protein. Like I eat pretty healthy. She actually had pretty easy. a fitness show two days before our surgery. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she looked amazing. But even just to give that up, you know, just, uh, you know, to me, she made a huge sacrifice, you know, her Absolutely. to work out and then put herself on stage and place, you know, number seven in her first competition and then have to, two days later, wake up and there's this, you know, a semi-scar and you and like, you know, and her, and she was still fine with it. She's like, nope, it's fine. It's fine. You know, Monique is your publicist, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> she tells, she makes sure that if I don't mention it, she's like, you know, she did a, I can't. a competition before we went to surgery, right? Oh, don't you worry, honey, because I have pictures to show it's you. It's just another, you know, reason for know how selfless she was, mm -hmm. you know, and just, to, again, like, to give that up and just to go for it and still want to, and, and it didn't take away from what she still wants to do. She, there's another competition coming up in May. She wants to work out for that, and now she has an uh, added tattoo. You know, it's not so big, but she's proud of it. Yes. You know, she will and it's, it didn't take anything, and that was one of my, another uh, concern I had. Was like, what if she doesn't feel comfortable enough on the stage, and maybe because of the, you know, what she did? But no, she's like, no, nope, I'm proud, loud, and yeah, proud. I like it. I love yeah. my scar. No, tell me about your diet po post uh, <laughs> transplant. My diet. Well, when I was on dialysis, as you know, the, we're restricted like a lot of intakes mm -hmm. you cannot do, you can't have this, you can't have that, you can't have that. And um, after having the transplant, they're like, oh no, you can have this, you can have anything you want. So it was, uh, took me a while to adjust, because I was so used to- To readjust. To, to readjust, like go back to it. Mm -hmm. And like, okay, so what I couldn't have before, you tell me I can have, are you sure? Um, one of my biggest, um, or well, my hardest thing was fluids. Um, they're like, you know, you have to drink a lot of fluids throughout the day, drink, 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 drink. And before, which is I would exactly just take a little bit, or yeah, or I wouldn't be thirsty at all. So now I have to think, you know, you have to stay hydrated. You have to stay. So I think that was the, the hardest. Like, I can go hours without drinking. Um, but diet wise, um, I gained a little bit of weight, which is, you know, good. It's mm -hmm. healthy. It's just a sign of saying that I'm, you know, healthy and it's so working for me. Weight, yeah. You know, um, but it's not hard. It's, I feel like I can, again, back to what I used to do a few years ago, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like I'm living a lot more. Well, probably you're not going to get an opportunity to do it again, but the question begs, would you do it again? Like if I had to do it all over again? Yeah. Yeah, I would. With my pains and all and my crying self, I would. <laughs> I would. Really it's good. worth it in the long run because, like, I seen her when she had, like, her off days. You know what I mean? Like, when you see someone that you, your friend with, your family with, like, you're really close to, you know when they're having a really off day. Like, there would be times where she would, like, you know, she would be tired or she would just look a little pale. Like, she would still keep going because mm -hmm. that's just who she is. Yes. Right. But she would feel, like, tired. And, like, now, like, now I'm like, okay, she's, <laughs> where she, she's going. Like, she ain't stopping anytime soon. <laughs> so it feels good to know that she feels, you is such a different person. Like, I know because I, I seen her before. I used to go with her. I went a few times with her to dialysis, so I know. Yep. I can see the difference. So the, the fact that she has your kidney, does that make it even more special? Oh, yeah, because my kidney's the bomb. <laughs> 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 my kidney's full of love. And, and, and she's a living donor. That's another thing, you know. Yes. To, that too. 
Anyone yeah. that donate. I, this is true. Most donors are, 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 are deceased. Are, are and, deceased, exactly. And, mm -hmm. you know, a complication can occur with that. Sometimes it takes a bit longer because the kidney's coming off ice to revive itself. And, you know, having from one to the other, it was like an automatic. Yeah. yeah. So I encourage a living donor. Absolutely. Like, listen, I already have two people. I'm like, yep, you're going to do it. I'm taking them to go get tested. <laughs> That's amazing. I mean, yeah. it, it really is amazing. So let me ask you this. We're going to run out of time shortly, but um, what would you say um, to your contemporaries in terms of being a donor? Get tested, you know, ask questions, you know, do your research. It's not as bad as you think it is. So, I mean, definitely do your research and donate. It's so easy. I mean, you know, it's such a rewarding feeling to know that you help someone live a longer life. It's a really rewarding feeling inside because at the end of the day, you know deep inside, like that person's still doing good or they're better because you did something to them. You, like, and money can't buy that. You can't buy that nowhere. Yeah, that's true. It's like prices. Absolutely. How about you, money? Yeah. As far as receiving? Well, yeah, I mean, the, whole, the, whole, the whole issue, how, how, would, would you, how would you respond to people, uh, your contemporaries, about you know, having a kidney? Having a kidney was well the best thing that could ever happen to me. Um, I feel alive. I know that I have so much I want to do. Um, again, just seeing my children um, live, watch me like be you know blossom to a better, I guess a healthier mother. I guess um, there's like no limitations at this point. You know, my son being basketball. There's a lot of games that I could not make because I was tired or I didn't feel well, and I felt like you know I I missed out on a lot. But now I can make every single basketball game. My daughter, she's five. She's into dance. She's in gymnastics. I can bring her, not have to ask anyone else. Um, just overall, Jay, just the love and mm -hmm. like the support that I received during that time from family, friends, strangers. Um, it's I don't know. I, I guess words can't really explain what you feel and to you, you have it. You but have it. you have to have it. It's like, I have to have. Like, you know, you go to the store and you're like, I have to have. Like, so you yeah. go get, like, you have to have, like, to have that, to have it. Um, what uh, I? I want to commend you. Thank you. And, and definitely commend you too, Jana. Thank you. In stepping up for your friend. Um, it's just, it's, it's an amazing thing. And, and from my perspective, because I am a, a kidney uh, patient, and therefore hope to get a kidney one day. This is a promising. This is a prom this is a promising conversation that maybe that too will happen for me. Yeah, my blood my blood pressure on a bonus side came down a lot. Um, as you, I used to run high, like 189 over say 101. Now it's down to like 106 over 60. Well, that's that's fantastic. Yeah, my creatinine is 0 0.9 as a few days ago. So you get well, it. All. Listen, ladies, this has been a rich conversation, mm -hmm. and, and we've run out of time. But I want to thank both you, Jaina and Monique, for appearing on the show today. Thank you, thank Peter. And we you, the listeners, it. for tuning in to another segment of In Another Opinion. A special thanks to PBS for making this program possible. I'm your host, Peter Wells. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at inanotheropinion at gmail.com. And have a good day.